Hello and welcome everyone. This is Dr. Flores with Jim Bach Academy. We're going to go through the closing process group and take five questions. Now, if you think about it, we've gone from initiating to planning to executing to monitoring, controlling to closing. And the idea here is that now we've gotten to where we're going to archive the lessons learned, where we're going to close the procurement. And regardless of how the project went, we have to close it. We must close a project that went well and a project that did not go well. The idea here is that we collect lessons learned. We want to know how we can better not only our future projects, but, by, but those of other project managers in our organization. And all of this information will eventually probably end up in the PMO, the Project Management Office. Okay, question number one. In which process group is the impact of changes the costliest to the project? So the key word here is impact. In which process group is the impact of changes the costliest? And the answer is A, initiating, B, planning, C, executing, or D, closing. Where is it going to cost you the most? What do you think? Hmm, I think you know the answer, D, closing, right? Be because we're looking at the impact of changes. Where is this going to cost the project the most? If you make a change late in the game, it's going to be more costly. Think about if you were buying a home. Within the first week or two or three or whatever, you want to install wiring for some kind of surround sound system. Okay, probably not going to cost you very much. You know, we there's still plenty of time to do it. You don't have to tear down any walls. You just go in and have it installed. Now, if you want to install the surround sound wiring near the end of the project, right when you get the keys, it's going to be pretty costly. So that's the point here. You want to resolve issues early because those requests for change late in the game, too expensive. This comes from the closing process group, page 51 in the PMBOK. Level 2. Question number two, which of the following does not take place during project closure? A, obtain deliverable acceptance by the customer or sponsor. B, submit change request. C, document lessons learned. Or D, finalize and close out procurements. So which of the following does not take place during project closure? Not. Now here you see not in caps. Probably this is not likely going to happen on the exam. You will just see it as another word look like every other word. So make sure you read the question carefully and you'll have another chance when you start looking at the responses because you're looking for not. Now some people use the affirmative, the positive. They'll say, well, I'm going to go look for the ones that are. I look for the not because I'm only looking for one item, one item that stands out. In this particular case, it's B, submit change request because by the time you get to closing, you should not be doing submitting change requests. You shouldn't be using your change control board. That should have been done much earlier. That's the purpose of monitoring controlling. And we have a process called validate scope. So before you move to closing, that should have already been done. Again, avoid those in real life. You want to avoid them because they're costly. But also think about it logically. If you're doing the right work, this should not be an issue in closing. Okay, this comes from closing. Pembok page 58 in level two because you had to think a little bit. Question number three. In sequential order of completion, what are two processes of the closing process group? Again, you're looking for processes in the closing process group. A, close project, close procurement. B, control scope, validate scope. C, validate scope, control scope. Or D, close procurement, close project. Now, this is very typical of, an, of any exam, is to give you some options that almost look alike. They use the same words, but they flip things around. So here the answer is D, close procurements, close project, because you want to close the procurements before you close the project. If you close the project and you still have procurements open, you've got trouble. You know, accounts payable is going to continue to write checks if you don't close that procurement. So you have heavy equipment that you're using for a project, and if you don't tell accounts payable in South Dakota, they're going to keep cutting the check. So the procurements are closed first, and then you follow the closing, follow by closing the project. This comes from page 61 of the PMBOK. Now, I would recommend that you spend time with page 61. In fact, if I were to retake the PMP, I would go back and memorize that, that chart. It's not that hard to memorize, really. There are 47 processes, and there's a matrix with the process groups in the knowledge areas. 
it'll do you some good and prepare you for the exam. Level one now on that one, even though it, it's more of a memor, well, basically because it is a memorization. Question number four. All of the following are organizational process assets in the closed project or phase except for A, project files, B, project or project phase closed documents, C, analytical techniques, or D, historical information. So all of the following are OPAs. Now, OPAs is an acronym I use, but that's not the way you're going to see it on the exam. The organizational process assets. But you're looking for one that's not. And the answer is C, analytical techniques. Analytical techniques is actually a tool and technique of closed project or phase. It is not an OPA, an organizational process asset. So the analytical technique is more like a regression analysis or a trend analysis. This comes from the PMBOK pages 103 and 104, but I do want to go back here and, and remind you that organizational process assets include project files, project phase docu closed documents, and historical information. The one that I really want you to remember is historical information. That one is a common one that, that is important to know. Let's put it that way. Very important for you to remember. Question number five. A few months after project uh, pipeline is complete, the project manager receives a call, a call from accounts payable in South Dakota. It was discovered that a vendor is still being paid for a heavy equipment lease. Which, um, which process did the project manager fail to address? A, closed project, B, closed procurement, C, closed vendor account, or D, final vendor account review. Okay, I think I gave it away earlier, right? The answer is B, closed procurements. Let me go back to the question, though. Some of these, like closed vendor account, sounds kind of silly almost, but it almost sounds kind of right. So, yeah, that's what's going on. You're, ven you're closing the vendor account, but that's actually not a process that we use in the PMBOK, the Project Management Body of Knowledge. So the answer is closed procurements. Closed procurements is the process of completing each procurement, including audits and negotiations. So know that that's what you're doing. You're closing the procurement. This comes from the PMBOK, page 386, level 2. Very important question. It's very situational, and you should be prepared for these kinds of questions on the exam. All right, I uh, just want to give you a quick uh, recap on, on Jimbok Academy. This, uh, there we have PM Quick Start for you, which is free PMP training. You can go through questions of this type. Uh, you can go and review other preparatory materials for the exam. But then if you really want to get more information, I would um, recommend that you go to PM Now. It's comprehensive training for CAPM and PMP. I've taught these courses for many years, and I've got quite a few of the certifications, so I can give you some pretty good tips, pretty good tips on how to prepare for the exams. And I think if you read through these questions the way I'm, I'm discussing them here, you're going to be in pretty good shape. A lot of it is how do you interpret the question? How do you, what do you, how do you know what the question is asking? And if you take that mindset, you'll do pretty well. So these exam-like questions help a ton with the voiceover. And if you want to get to know more about it, about the programs, whether it's Quick Start, which is free, or the comprehensive program, PM Now, then I recommend that you go to Jimbok Academy. All right, more questions to come here soon, and uh, good luck with your exam. See you soon.